Hi everybody, I'm Melanie. I'm one of the zookeepers here at the Cincinnati Zoo in Botanical Garden. We also have Erin here. Hi guys. And you are joining us for our home safari. Um, and yesterday was a big hit, we had Fiona, but today the competition for Fiona is Rico the porcupine. He's pretty darn cute, um, so check him out. He is a prehensile tailed porcupine. Aaron is one of his primary trainers, and she is going to be um, giving him some rewards um, because we do positive reinforcement training with all of our animals. So that means that we ask Rico to come out of his habitat and do a couple of fun uh, activities and behaviors. And uh, when he participates in that, then he gets a reward. So today, it looks like he's eating some dried apricot there. Maybe even hearing some smacking. I also brought some dried banana chips, which he likes because they're very crunchy. Porcupines love a very crunchy treat. Isn't that right, Melanie? Yes, they do. <laughs> um, so he is eating some fruit, some dried fruit today. Um, he loves basically all types of produce. Some of his favorite things here at the zoo uh, are corn on the cob and blueberries. Um, they also like to eat any type of salad greens. So we'll give them mustard greens, all kinds of healthy things. Hopefully you guys at home are eating healthy as well, so we can all stay healthy and be active just like Rico. Mm -hmm. um, in the wild though, prehensile tail porcupines, they are from South America. So um, there's a lot of them in Brazil. So another common name for them, other than prehensile tail porcupine, is the Brazilian porcupine. Um, and so being in the neotropics in southern uh, South Africa, they live up into the trees, so you can probably guess what they might eat. Um, the leaves of the trees. And they're even known to sometimes eat on the bark um, and even on the inner parts of the trees um, called the Cambrian layer. Um, and in addition to that, they'll eat nuts and twigs um, and all kinds of things. And so it's really important for them to eat seeds because then they help with seed dispersal. So this is something no one should try at home with a porcupine. Rico and I have been working together since he first came to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, and so we have a lot of trust built up between the two of us. And because the zoo is closed to visitors right now, um, we decided that we wanted to give him a chance to get out and stretch his legs and play around a little bit. So we've set up a little bit of an obstacle course. Rico is going to be allowed to just sort of run around wherever he likes. A lot of the items that we've put down are things he's actually never seen before, so I have no idea what he's going to do with them. What do you think, bud? Do you want to come try? This ramp he knows pretty well, but he's going to take a quick spin around on his table to make sure he did not leave any treats behind. Yeah, some of his favorite activities really just include anything with climbing. So we created basically a porcupine playground um, and this is one of the spaces that we do use here at the zoo for a lot of the education program animals that Aaron and I work with um, so that we can take them on quiet days like this um, to exercise and get any sort of stimulation. A lot of times there's some smells from other animals in the carpet um, and just being outside of their normal space makes them feel good. We also challenge them too. Um, you might get to see a couple of the food items that we have throughout the playground. In fact, up at the top of this ramp, there is a ball with more banana chips in there. So there's a little bit of a puzzle feeder. <laughs> He's not sure about that one. <laughs> there's a puzzle feeder for him, um, and that also will work his brain. So for those of you guys still maybe doing some school activities at home, we gotta keep your brain nice and sharp. Sharp as a quill, that is. <laughs> so porcupines do have quills all over their body. They do not shoot them out like most cartoons may um, imply. But Actually, they... Melanie, let's do a home activity right now. Okay. I want everyone who's listening to close their eyes, concentrate very hard, and on the count of three, shoot the hair out of your head into the person next to you. <laughs> now, if anyone did it, they can feel free to write in and tell us, but I do not think they will be telling the truth. The fact is that Rico's quills, which he is showing off so nicely right now, are made of the same stuff that our hair is. 
And just like our hair, it is very firmly anchored into their skin. And so it does not shoot just because they feel like it. Enrico's getting up on another table now. And he's going to continue exploring his, uh, his classroom playground. <laughs> now, as you guys see him getting a little fluffier and those quills kind of standing up on end, that is a good example of what happens when porcupines get a little bit excited. If something startles them or something's happening that they're really excited about, they tend to make those quills stand up. And then um, as they calm down, they get a little bit sleeker and closer to their body. One of the things I like the best about Rico is that I feel like he's a lot like a lot of the little boys and girls I know in that as soon as he sees a way to climb up something, he likes to choose the most difficult way possible. So climbing up the underside of his ramp or trying to climb up all the walls, things like that. Um, but like Melanie said, he's an amazing climber and he really loves to do it. It is his definite favorite way to play. One of the places that you may see him climb, he will use his tail. So that tail is a prehensile tail, meaning that he uses it just like an extra arm or leg. He can even hang from it like a monkey or a possum. And half of his tail's weight is actually in muscle. It's a very, very strong tail. And even on the very underneath side, it's kind of calloused um, in that it doesn't have any quills and it has a thick callus kind of like the bottom of your feet. And that helps him to grip onto branches and um, use it to hold all of his body weight, which Rico, by the way, weighs about 15 pounds. And he is a full grown little boy. He's four years old. You can hear him smacking. Let's listen to that crunch one more time. So if anybody has questions about Rico, you can always chime in on those. But we, there's a lot of vocalizations that you might be hearing from Rico. I'm trying to be quiet in some moments, just so you might be able to hear it. Oh, he's gonna get some romaine. Anybody eating salad at home? He does his without ranch dressing. <laughs> uh, but he makes all kinds of little moans or grunts or hisses or huffs. And hissing doesn't always mean um, that he's upset um, unlike other animals where hissing might be a threatening sound or a threatening call. And those whiskers are so long, he uses those to feel his way around. And what else you might notice, something very big on the front end of his face is his nose. He has a really good sense of smell <laughs> and he's also a very curious individual, <laughs> very interested in the phone. <laughs> Melanie, a lot of people are asking about this yellow color that they see. Is that his skin? Is his skin yellow or is that just the base of his quills that are that color? I love that you guys asked that question. The yellowing that you see is actually from a waxy substance that comes from glands in his skin called sebaceous glands. Um, we have them as well. That provides the oils in our hair. Um, but his is more waxy and it's also that yellow color. Um, so it helps keep his quills nice and moisturized and shiny in his skin as well, of course. That was a great question. So Rico, just like some of our cats and dogs at home, is really great at getting into new spaces, but not always the best at getting out of them. <laughs> so we are going to try to give him the opportunity to come down. I might have to hold his ramp for him. What do you think, bud? Do you think you can do this? Can you be brave for me? So being um, an education animal, or an ambassador animal, as we call um, the animals that go on our education programs here, like Rico, um, we do work very closely with them, very often, so that we have a strong bond and trust with them, so that people can meet these animals up close and in the comfort of our animals. So we wanna make sure that they're very comfortable and that they're even uh, not only just comfortable, but enjoying the time spending with people to inspire them with wildlife.
with these up close encounters. So Rico's having a good time getting some exercise and treats and smelling different things. This is very novel for him, um, being outside of his habitat. And even within his habitat, it's also our job as his zookeepers to provide enrichment within his habitat. Um, so we will bring things to him as well as um, the times that we bring him out to other things. We got another good question from John and Kelsey. They want to know if he has any natural predator predators. Um, so they're actually not so natural of predators. Um, if, well, at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. a lot of people in Brazil have been known to eat porcupines. So a predator of the porcupine are humans, and then also the human's best friend, some dogs, um, will predate on porcupines. But there are occasional predators up in trees that will um, get these guys. Um, because they do spend about 85% of their time up in the trees. Oh, he's standing his quills up. He got a little bit spooked because Michelle dropped her glasses. <laughs> and because we're talking about predators. <laughs> the tricky part about porcupines, as everyone at home can probably see, is that they are covered in those quills. And so a predator has to be smart enough to get to the soft underbelly of the porcupine to be able to uh, make a meal out of it. Crosley asked, how is Rico able to climb so well? Yeah, so we, we talked a little bit about the prehensile tail that works like an extra limb and can grasp onto things. As you can see, he's doing right now. He's wrapping that tail around for some extra support. But in addition to that, I don't know if you can um, show his rear feet, but they're kind of angled out, and that helps him to grab onto branches a little bit easier than a foot that might be angled forward. So he grabs onto branches with him. He's actually doing it right now. Oh, just for a split second. So mm -hmm. fast. He's getting into the groove of this party here. And I will also say we've been working with Rico since he first came to the Cincinnati Zoo. And when he first came to us, he was about four months old and he came from um, another zoo in Ohio. And he actually was a terrible climber. And so it took a lot of practice for him to be as good at climbing as he is today, especially Learning how to use that tail took a very long time for him. He was really good with his hands and feet at first, but that tail definitely took a while to learn. Some of our followers obviously know some things about porcupines because they're asking what they smell like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish you guys could smell him. <laughs> Although I'm not sure you would want the smell in your home, but he smells almost like really raw or rank onions. Um, and we have had female prehensile-tailed porcupines at our zoo, and they did not smell as oniony as our male Rico here. Um, and also, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a little bit of a dispersal <laughs> of some poop around the room. <laughs> now, if you guys were planting a garden, a lot of times you want to make sure you throw seeds around everywhere, which is basically what Rico is doing by pooping everywhere. They are known for eating tree seeds, and then they move about in the forest, and they basically plant those seeds by pooping all over the place. So that is a really important job that porcupines have while living in the forests of the neotropics, is by planting and dispersing the tree seeds. This is a great way for you guys to see how long and uh, strong his back feet are, as well as that tail. He can hang on to this pole, which is fairly smooth, while he uses his front feet to eat. And just like a lot of people out there, um, Rico is right-handed. So he almost always takes a treat first with his right hand. Um, and then if his left hand is, is needed for something that's real big, then he'll, he'll use that as well. Is Rico nocturnal? Yes. In general, yeah, prehensile tail porcupines are nocturnal, but since Rico lives here with us um, at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, he uh, is sort of used to being on a people schedule. And so he wakes up when we get into work, which is uh, around eight o'clock in the morning. And when we leave for the day, we feed him his dinner around five o'clock PM at night. And so he is sort of switched onto our schedule. It certainly does not hurt him to be awake during the day. Um, part of the reason why the wild porcupines are nocturnal is because they mostly rely on that sense of smell to get around. His eyesight is actually not very good at all, and he is mostly using that nice big nose 
to find his way around the world. I will say too, I love to know the Latin meaning of names of animals. The word porcupine actually means spiny pig. And you can see why he would be called a spiny pig. Look at that nose, it's very pig-like. However, they are not close relatives of pigs. They are actually related to rodents. They're in the same order as rodents. And they have teeth that continuously grow just like rodents. Um, so he does not have any sort of enamel on his teeth, the protective coating that we have on our teeth to keep them nice and white. Um, so that's why they turn orange. He eats a lot of orange colored foods. He loves carrots and sweet potato and even, look, apricot. Um, so his teeth are orange, but that's okay because his teeth will always be growing. Do you guys brush your teeth at home to make sure that your teeth don't turn orange? <laughs> Hope so. There are a lot of kids watching and a lot of kids want to know if Rico ever has to get a bath. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. And um, so Rico does not get baths. He actually prefers to stink. And <laughs> since our job as zookeepers uh, is to make sure that our animals are happy, healthy, and safe, um, we do not mind that Rico stinks so long as he is happy and healthy about it. And he is. Um, in the wild, these guys do live in the rainforest, and so they might get wet every day a little bit. He's trying to take the camera over. He knows all of his best angles, after all. Um, and so they might get wet during the daily rainforest uh, showers that happen, but in general, Rico does not love getting wet. Uh, he much prefers to just kind of be stinky and dirty, which is fine. So I want you guys, since you're getting a lot of good angles of Rico, I want you guys to look at all of the features of his cute little body and face. Um, and I am going to challenge you guys to an activity at home. I would love for you guys to make some sort of art that is inspired by Rico. Whether that be that you get an apple and stick it with some spiny toothpick quills, um, or any other site, sort of artwork that is Rico inspired. We want to see your porcupine art. Um, and you guys can follow the instructions on the post there or on our website on how to submit the artwork. And we are going to show Rico your lovely porcupine themed artwork later on and possibly even post it on the Cincinnati Zoo's uh, page. So there's an activity for you kids to do later, or even big kids. Big kids can do it too, for sure. I know yes. I will. Yes. Rico is one of our favorites. Okay. Um, so that looks like it's going to be about the end of Rico's time. We actually have to go and exercise other animals. Believe it or not, with um, everything being shut down, we are still here giving the best care for our animals. So um, we have to go and take care of other animals. 